Today I'm going to cover a couple major items that I participated in my life and learned how to do fairly well. And I've seen other people that have gathered these tools and I've got a little more oomph in it, but I do pretty good at it. And, and the two tools are assumptive thinking and heavy absorption. Okay? Now, first of all, on assumptive thinking, I, I, gave, I, I talked on this the other day and someone came up and said, assume. You know, what does it mean? It makes an ass of you and me. <laughs> I says, oh, there goes a word that I love. You do, use, you do assume things, of course. We all assume things to survive. When you walk and you step, you assume the ground's going to be under you that next step. So we do assume, and it is valuable too. We wouldn't make it without it. If we thought about everything we did, we wouldn't make it without it. But I'm talking about putting yourself into another spot to increase or accelerate personal growth. Some things you really want to do in life. To take an assumptive step at the beginning or before you even do it. Now, I picked up this technique, and I'll bring you through stories on how I got there. When I first went through college, I didn't assume anything. And I really worked at college. In fact, I was wondering, because I was the first one in my family that ever went to college, if I had enough space up there to put it all in. Boy, I might not have enough space up there to put it all in. After I finished, they were, you know, the, whole, the whole family sort of came after me. But I got, there's enough room. But I was nervous. I didn't assume anything. I didn't assume I could make it. It was tough for me. I really worked. Then I got in the military. They had at that time in history what was known as the draft. I go in up with my blue thing hanging down here with a, and got my degree in philosophy, which is totally useless. But I've used it to think about things all my life. And with this useless thing, I walked out and I went home and I looked at the mailbox and I had this letter It said U.S. government. And I got what they call a draft notice and I said, oh God, I can't do this. I just can't do a draft notice. I don't want, it was Vietnam, it just started and I knew where I was going to end up. So I ran down, they had a naval station real close, NAS Twin Cities in Minneapolis. So I went down and I said, what can I do? I said, oh, here, here's something you can do. We're going to make you an aviator. I said, I have never been in a plane. They said, well, take the test. Nothing wrong. So I took the test, and I passed it. Well, I passed it, and they said, oh, go be an aviator. I said, great. I said, when am I going to get to fly? They said, down there. They put me on a commercial flight. So I got in and I was, I was down there. And all of a sudden I found out that you can't go to the library and study after things. They put you in front of stuff and they put all these plain books in front of you and said, learn it. Now you, got, you, know, you might have three minutes and now go out and run ten miles. And I looked and I says, oh, well, I'm going to have to take another approach at life here or I'm not going to make this. So I just said, mind, get this. So I just look at the pages and turn them because that's about all you had time for. And it was really surprising that I, I passed these tests. It was like, I 
was forced into thinking faster. And I said, well, I'm just going to assume I can do it. So I started doing it. And I took this tool on through all my military. I would go in and I'd say, I assume I'm going to pass the next test. I assume I'm going to do good in class. And I went from of 60 people, the 58th person, down to the fifth by this approach. And it's assuming. Now, assuming has worked all my life. When I decided to be a CPA, everyone know what a CPA is? Certified Public Accountant? They have a really, really tough test that you have to take to do it. Well, I had got out of the service and I went down and I said, I want to be a, have a degree in international management. So I got a degree in international management and at that time in the world, you know what it was worth? About the same as my bachelor's in philosophy. And I says, man, I got to do something. So I said, well, they want accountants all over the world. I can travel and be an accountant. But I only had like five, five credits in accounting. So I says, well, assumptive thinking. I'm going to be an accountant. I still got more of my GI Bill. I went for it. So I went down. I went to ASU, Arizona State University. And I, and I signed up for 47 credits for that year in accounting. That was my next thing. Massive engrossing into a subject. Overfill yourself with, self with things. Over, just load yourself with it. Just, just absolutely 100% dunk yourself in the water. So I assumed I was a CP before I even started. And then I started really getting into it. I would go from one class to another. One accounting class to another. And my objective was to get through the classes. I didn't care about the grades. Because I already had three degrees by that time. But I needed to get a job. I had a family. And I wanted to do it. And it worked for me in the service. And I did it. By the end of that year, I had over 50 credits and I went and took my CPA exam a month after I got out and passed it. That was the whole objective. Grades didn't matter except to get C's or better. I think I did pretty good in some of the things. But that was the objective. Go for it. Now, these tools have worked for me all my life now. I got into some very, very critical situations. And I, and I don't mean life-threatening. I did those when I was doing things that were not appropriate, but not, not life-threatening, but career-threatening. I became finance director of a hospital in San Francisco through the maze of jobs we get in life. And I went in there and I said, man, this new mini computer's coming out and I'm going to put a mini computer in here because these people say they have a system that runs hospitals. You can imagine the first computers coming out, the first mini computers. They were before the TS-80, if anyone knows what that is or ever heard of it. That Radio Shack came out with like eight years before that. They didn't have anything that did anything. You could buy a million dollar IBM and you could do it. But I didn't ha I wasn't manager of that big a hospital. And the one I bought was like about 60000 And I looked and I says, oh, 
I promised my board of directors that this was going to be successful. So I went back to my tool kit, and what did I do? Massively involved myself in programming and assumed I was a programmer that had completed hospitals. Now, it involved a little time. Being finance director, I had to be there about 9 and work till 3.30. Then I went into the computer room and I worked at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. And I had to do that for six months. But I massively put myself in it and would not stop. Would not stop. And what did that happen? At the end of that time, I had a hospital system on a mini computer that could run any hospital in the world. And my journey took me other places. But that whole experience created me as a master programmer. I had learned how to do a major language at that time. It was, at that time it was business basic. And I learned how computers operated. I went back to bits and bytes. But I massively put myself into it. And I had to do this one more time in computers. But I'm going to skip ahead now. We're going to, we're going to take another journey. We're going to go 34 years or 35 years. That was easy. And we're going to go into my 69th birthday. And I said, I am going to be a Toastmaster. So what did I do? I went into my assumptive thinking and I went into massively putting myself into Toastmasters. So I don't even have one in this. Usually I have a coin and I take a coin out and I give it to me and I put it in the other pocket and I say because I got paid what am I? Professional. Yes Luke, I'm a professional. I got paid for it. So I assumed I'm a speaker. So I started off in my first speaking. I assumed when I walked up on that stage, I was a professional speaker. I'm just picking up my skills. I talked to Dr. Charles Torres, who was a doctor, and I said, when you were a student, did you practice and really work hard? And he said, I said when you came at Doctor, was it easier for you to learn stuff? He said, I was a doctor then. Okay, isn't that right? I was a doctor then. All you, all, everyone here has, when you get your profession, all of a sudden you learn stuff just by scanning it. Well, if you do the assumptive thinking, do the scanning at the front end, you get it. Now, when I came to the Bay Area, I went from one Toastmaster in 50 square miles to 50 Toastmasters in 10 square miles. And I joined five Toastmasters. And I went, and five days a week, I gave a speech. Is there any time I didn't sign up for a speech? Not once. I put myself into an assumptive thinking process to be Nothing but success. To perfect my already professional status. So when you're doing that next step, be assumptive before you start and massively put yourself into being successful at it. Thank you.